Hi everyone! So in this video I am just going to be getting ready to film some other things. I'm really just kind of going for a very natural look today. Um, I'm sort of steering away from liquid foundations um, as you might have guessed from my last get ready with me video. Um, I, I've received a lot of positive feedback though filming that type of a video and I like it because I'm getting ready anyway to film and I like to have a good chat and I like to hear the comments and questions and those types of things from all of you. So it's a really good opportunity for that and um, I thought why not film these more regularly? I might as well. Um, I've got some conversation starter questions here as well um, just so I can talk about some random stuff. But today I think I'm just going to get ready with some tinted moisturiser. I've got a Fair Minerals tinted moisturiser, the um, Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream in Opal. Um, so I thought I'd try that. I did receive a really good comment for a recommendation for some NARS foundations um, from a subscriber, so thank you very much. Um, I actually found a sample that I have of a NARS foundation. It's not the same one. They recommended Sheer Glow, I think it is, and I don't think I've tried that one before. This one's the Light Reflecting Foundation, but one of the colours that she suggested would be a match for me, potentially, is in here, which is the Mont Blanc Light 2, um, which is that one up there, and I think it might be fairly close. So I had a look at some of the stuff on the Mecca Cosmetica or Mecca website um, for NARS and they do have quite a good shade range in my kind of category. Um, so that's nice. I'm not sure about the Bare Minerals one. Um, the problem with me is that sometimes once they're on and they oxidize they go really orange or yellow so it doesn't end up matching. But we'll see how it goes. This one says to apply with fingers, so that's going to be really easy. All right, first steps first. Let's try. I should have tissues, but I don't to wipe my hands once I'm done. But it's a future me in a moment problem. I will work that out. So I'm just going to put some of the tinted moisturizer in the palm of my hand, dot it around my face, and then apply it with my fingers. So I've got a mirror here. We'll see how this goes. My problem areas, I guess, when I'm using any kind of um, foundation or tinted moisturizer is kind of my forehead area. It has the most texture and that's where I've got a lot of the fine lines and some of the deeper lines, particularly here, which one day I've been thinking about getting them done. Um, but also because I get really bad headaches and I hold a lot of tension in there, which I've said before, but it's just, I'm not against getting Botox and hopefully it would help with that because I just, I'm always, I don't know if they're furrowing my brow, is that what it's called? Like I've always got that tightness across here. Um, and it's not, you know, it gives me headaches. <laughs> I just have to relax it. I was trying facial massage and to be honest I um, probably should get back onto that because it was helpful. I had the facial massage stone just from Kmart. Uh, it was really inexpensive compared to you know $40 plus up to like $90 for some of them. I just got one from Kmart for like $8 and it was fine. I used it with some facial oils. And um, it helped. And I think just getting into a routine where I was using uh, an oil every night helped hydrate my skin. And with some of my more fine lines, particularly up around here, um, I think they just get worse when I'm dehydrated or when my skin is dehydrated. So just doing that alone uh, was actually helpful in reducing the wrinkles. But the tension after I'd finished doing the facial massage just around here felt more relieved and across here was a lot more relieved so I should probably start getting back into that. It's always hard to tell in the um, was it the viewfinder? Um, 
it looks washed out and I hope it's not. I never know until I edit it, which is always fun, always a risk. Those of you that are into filming, you would understand. But I've got a very simple setup. I don't have multiple lights. I've got, I've actually cut down my lights. I used to have some box lights when I was filming and I still have them. They're in my cupboard, but I broke them down because I found I wasn't filming as much because I do need the artificial light. Generally when I film it's nighttime, so I don't have natural light. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. So I needed light and it was just a hassle and they were taking up so much room that I'd put them in the spare room and then I'd just be hesitant to get them out because they were just big and clunky. And I've had them since the beginning of my channel uh, or the very early days. I remember making a video talking about them. Um, so they're still working. They still work fine. Uh, it's just I replaced them with a ring light that I got from Amazon, um, which compared to when I started and ring lights were going for a few hundred dollars, this one was like $80 or something like that. Um, and it works really quite well. It's portable. It's really quite small. It's great. So it's just so much easier. The next thing that I want to get is some form of like a tripod or a stand um, that will allow my camera to face straight down onto the table. That way when I do more nail art videos, because that's one thing I want to film soon is a new nail wrap video for short nails. But I want to get the angle right because now I use the same tripod that I'm using. But I tilt it as far forward as I can and sort of lean the camera down so it's not perfectly straight down and I think if I could get something that was straight down it would work better other than that I'm toying with the idea of trying a two camera system where I use my phone because my phone can film in 4k and that's the thing now is that the camera that I'm using this one the main one here is quite old it still works fine and I'm gonna still use it so but my phone uh, the phones these days can film in full HD and 4k and 8k I think now too so it just opens up a lot more possibility and opportunity to use that so I, I might try that and toy with that for a few just tests to make sure it works and what the format works for the editing software and um, yeah see how that goes because if I can use that for nail art um, I should be able to come up with I think I've got a like a phone tripod thing that I would hold and um, it's got arms that kind of curl or move around I have a washing line, uh, one of those washing racks, um, clothing racks that looks like this essentially. If I put that over the desk, wrap it around there and have it facing straight down, um, that would give me the angle that I want and I would have everything that I need to do it. As long as the, um, the tripod arm has a good enough grip, if not duct tape might hold it on so I'll play around with that see how that goes so now what I might do is just do a quick blush and um, then use the blush as a bit of an eyeshadow as well so a couple of just random questions from a list this is a list I had a while ago I was doing a QA. and a it's just some random questions and some questions from some subscribers as well uh, so I will go through those just conversation starter type questions. Uh, when you were a kid, what movie did you watch constantly? And I think from memory, this is the thing, I haven't set the, uh, and <laughs> just diverting, but um, I haven't set the tinted moisturiser, so I'm going to have to try to on the like bounce on the blush because it's not it's a bit tacky um, so if I set it then 
I don't want to set it because I kind of want that hydrated dewy look but I might just put a little bit of powder here I'm across my t-zone because I do get oily there but we'll see so the movie I watched as a kid a lot um Fern Gully comes to mind so the one where they're chopping down a rainforest and you know, you've got Robin Williams I think played Batty the character I used to watch that a lot as a kid the one that I'd watch it wasn't a movie but it was a TV show um, was Dinosaurs where he'd be honey I'm home and then there was the um, not the mama the pink baby dinosaur I think Land Before Time was another dinosaur thing but uh, another movie that we would watch or Littlefoot um, what else as I got older I used to like Dante's Peak um, Twister I still love Twister I watch Twister all the time now love it that's another thing recently I've been watching more tornado videos um, they just storms, tornadoes. It just fascinates me. Uh, it's something that I've always been interested in, even when I was really young. So we're talking like 10, 11 years old. I was just so interested in storms, volcanoes, tornadoes. Um, and I've said this before that I really seriously considered all the way up to when I was university age, um, doing meteorology and geology and um, looking into becoming a volcanologist, seriously. And uh, there was one place in Australia that offered the course, um, but realistically I would have needed to have moved overseas, so either Hawaii or um, New Zealand at the time. And that just wasn't something that I really wanted to do at that stage in my life so I chose a different career path but it still really interests me I find I just find it mesmerizing and we don't really get tornadoes here in Australia very often we do get some and there have been some this year um, but they are nowhere near as destructive or as common particularly inland where there's um, established housing and stuff like that. We can get water spouts off the coast. Um, there are some that go inland and we get targeted little areas. Uh, we do get storms. Obviously, a lot of you have seen, we, you know, we get floods, we get rain, all sorts of stuff like that, bushfires. But as far as tornadoes go, I've, I just watch some of the... Um, storm chasers and storm videos on YouTube mainly and it's still just I find it absolutely fascinating and very very interesting and yeah it's it's almost hypnotizing which I guess I could understand that that people could get um like so distracted by looking at it that they don't go to shelter which I can imagine is probably a very dangerous thing um so maybe one day I'll go to the States and um, yeah, go down Tornado Alley or something and have a little look-see, but not in a dangerous way because I'm not a professional and I don't want to get into people's way um, and I'll get hurt. So maybe one day I'll just tag along with somebody or something. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, that was a bit of a, um, a tangent. All right, um, now another question, let's see. Uh, if you had to sum up the internet in one word, what would it be? I would probably say vast. It's just, just so much out there on the internet, good and bad. Uh, I think it's something that, you know, when I was younger, the internet wasn't in every household so when I was in primary school not everybody had the internet and 
you know, when we first got the internet, we had dial-up, so you couldn't use the phone at the same time as you used the internet. It would make a horrible noise when you were dialing up. It would drop out all the time, <laughs> you know, compared to now where it's pretty much on every phone and you can connect. Um, it's just, yeah, a lot. When I think about it that way, it's, it's quite incredible. Uh, I guess I remember, like, when I was doing primary school projects, I would go to the library and photocopy encyclopedias and books and do all of that because we couldn't find the information just on the internet. Um, towards later primary school, like the the mid mid nineties onwards, like ninety five, ninety six. You could a little, um, but I think I got the internet, I think, in 90, 95 or 96. And there wasn't much on it that we could find. Um, it was very different now. But, yeah, so vast, I think, is the word I would use because I use it for what I use it for, um, but... There's so much more that I don't use the internet for and I know that it can be used for and there's so much more that I don't understand about it um, that I think, again, it's just it's really interesting uh, how far technology has come and, and what that's meant, like working from home and all kinds of things like that, that just the opportunities now. Yeah, along, you know, and with, like most things, with the good comes the bad. So that's another thing is balancing, you know, spending too much time on the internet, um, getting too reliant on the internet. But it's just like everything. Um, so yeah. Let's have a look at some of these questions and then I'll pick a few while I do my mascara and eyebrows and stuff. Okay, so a couple of questions. Um, time or space? I think time. The way that I interpret that very basic question, time or space, would be if I could control either of them, for example, I think it would be interesting if I could travel through time without consequence. Um, so I guess it really depends on what you believe, whether or not you believe in like a many worlds type theory or if you believe in grandfather paradox and things like that. Um, it can get very deep and very technical, particularly time travel. Um, that's why most most of the time movies will fail. There will be some technical aspect of, of that. So let's, you know, don't overthink movies that have time travel. But I think it would be really interesting if you could just be an observer and travel through time. Or manipulate time and I think it would be interesting um, I guess in a way if you could travel through space you could somehow travel through time in a way but yeah I think time <laughs> it's a bit of a weird weird question but um with any of these questions if, if you would like to leave your answers below I would love to read them because I find learning more about people is very interesting to me. I, I really enjoy learning more. And I guess in an environment where this is kind of my opportunity to get to ask you things and have you answer them, I think it would be nice to read some of those comments. So feel free to leave a comment below with any questions you have for me or any answers that you have for these. Shape shift or mind read? It's a good, it's <laughs> a tough one. Mm, I think 
think I'd rather shapeshift. Because I don't know if I'd want to be able to mind read. I think it could be... I don't know, like, if you, if you think about it, sometimes if you're angry or upset, you may even have thoughts that you don't, you don't really believe them. We don't really want to act them out or you could just be thinking about random things. And I could only imagine that if you were reading somebody's mind and they were thinking something like that, it could be upsetting. You know? And then once once it's out in the open, you, you can't put it back in the bag. <laughs> like once you've heard it, you're not going to forget it. So I think shape shifting would be interesting, even if I could just shape shift into me with my makeup already done. <laughs> so I wouldn't have to worry about doing that. And um, that'd be interesting. Okay, so a few more questions and um, that'll probably bring it to two around when I'm finished doing my makeup. And then I might just work out what to do with this because I um, tried to put some mousse in my hair after washing it yesterday. It's meant to be a curl enhancing mousse from Garnier. Anti frizz. If it wasn't anti frizz, my hair still went frizzy. And it's not like super curly, it's just more like wavy, some bits are curly, some bits are wavy, some bits are straight still, um, but we'll see, or maybe do half, half, half down, we'll see how that goes, but anyway, so next question, what's been the best concert you've attended? I think it's been a while since I've actually been to a concert, um, been to a few. I think Limp Biscuit. I've seen them twice in concert. Once when I was much younger, I think it was 2001, I think I saw them the first time. And the next time, I think it was 2018. Um, and they were great. Still great. Really enjoy their concert. Um, what else? Uh, Evanescence, they were pretty good as well. She still has an amazing voice live and that's just some, some people just don't sing as well live and that's okay. It's still entertaining but when we were in Vegas I think that was um, end of 2016 I think we were in Vegas and um, we saw Elton John that was really good too even though I don't know all of his music it was still a concert that I just wanted to see and um, it was still very entertaining what else I think I think I've been I went to the big day out when I was younger as well. I don't even think that's still a thing, but that was good. Um, Kylie Minogue, first ever concert. I think it was in 97 or 98. I think it was 97. That was, that was good. <laughs> it's Kylie Minogue. Um, what else have we got? I think I saw some Incubus concerts back in the day, a few others here and there. Oh, I remember, um, I think it was in 99 or 2000, I saw, it was just like at a local leisure centre hall, <laughs> there was probably only like 30, 30 40, 50 people there, um, sick puppies were there and they were very newish at the time they weren't you know that um all the same song whatever the free hugs song that wasn't known 
um, it was like Sun Clotto, that, those kind of, like it was a very alternative kind of setup. Um, that was fun. I think it was in 99 though, so I was 14 or 15 years old. Um, yeah, so, but I think, yeah, first concert, if I had to pick one, Limp Bizkit. That'd be, that'd be my pick. Uh, next question, would you rather go camping in the woods or stay at a beach resort? I think I like both. Um, how about if I stayed at a, at a, a mountain resort <laughs> instead? Uh, I don't mind the beach. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of camping, if I'm honest. Like, I used to do bushwalking, hiking, camping, stuff like that when I was younger. Um, but now, my back is just not great. And sleeping on the ground is not ideal for me. So, that's, you know, makes it difficult. Um, Beach-wise, though, I guess... Maybe go, I'd go with the beach just by default, but I like the rainforest and the bush kind of setting here. Um, up in the mountains in Sydney, it's really beautiful. Uh, I like to go there. Uh, eventually when we have a property of our own uh, out with like property, I and mean, not like, I mean a property like a house, but like properties in land. I'd love to have it where we have trees with a stream running through it. So not stagnant water that has mosquitoes and all that jazz, um, but like moving flowing water through it and just lots of trees and just nature. It would be beautiful. But then I might go camping in my own backyard. But yeah, for this question, I would just, just I guess, say beach resort just because it would be a bit more comfortable anyway. Um, and the last question would be, if you were in a band, what kind of music would you play? So I have been thinking about trying to learn how to play guitar. I used to play very, very basic guitar when I was younger. And then I kind of gave up because it got, <laughs> got really difficult. I've got very short fingers. So some of the chords I find it very difficult to, to play um, because I kept bumping other strings when I was trying to play different chords so if I was holding them up here and then this this one needed to be on the top up here I've just got really short short hands so if I did get a guitar I would need one with a really thin neck um, or I would just have to play guitar that has less strings potentially, but that's not ideal. Um, that's not really what I wanted to do. So maybe one day if I got back into that, um, I do have a keyboard. I actually have two keyboards. They're currently in my garage, but I used to just play around and make songs and, um, some of them were actually pretty good. Um, I would write my own music. I can't read music. That's one thing that I never learned how to do. I would play by ear. Um, I cannot read music. Um, so that's a problem, I guess. But if I was in a band, the type of music I would play would probably be, I guess like a really light alternative alternative sort of music or just whatever I felt like I think um, I've always been into that kind of um, alternative rock music um, not like really poppy stuff I like a whole range of music but for me when I was writing my own stuff it would always come across a bit more um, moody I guess <laughs> um, so that's probably what I would end up playing um, if I was in a band so that's pretty much it that's it for now 
I am going to call it here. Uh, then I'm going to work out what to do with this mess before I film my actual video next. It's just... Yeah, I've had it up in a bun, so it's all over the place, but yeah, it's kind of, the curl has dropped out of it. I might just do some half up, half down thing. You can see that uh, my greys are very long now. It's been two and a bit years since I started growing out my hair. So it's almost, the back of it down here is like this far off being completely dye free uh, and this top section I think if I look at it here it's down to about about here so there's about about that much before that's dye free there um, but I've got sections where it's a, a bit lighter it's like two big chunks just here and here where all my grey or oh, silver hair is coming through. Um, it's actually not a bad colour. Um, I know some people don't like the colour grey that they end up having but I don't mind mine. It's kind of like a really white platinum silver colour. Um, I just I don't have as much of it as I thought I did. When I was dyeing my hair all the time, I mean I loved my hair red. I loved having red hair um, and I still have a little less through it now but when I was younger I had more red in my hair naturally anyway but now it's kind of just a chocolatey brown and then it's got the grey speckled through bits of it but it's mainly up in this top section here so you can kind of see it there but it's just this really bright white grey so I don't mind the look of it but yeah there is a lot less than I thought there was. Um, when I was dyeing my hair all the time, um, it just looked like there was so much more grey hair. So it's been interesting growing it out. Um, but if you're interested about my experience growing out my hair, um, if you're thinking about doing it and you want me to share my experience and my thoughts and just the process for the last two years, uh, let me know because I can film a video on that. Uh, I know there are a lot of people out there that have shared their journey through going through the same process um, and um, yeah so if you want me to I haven't documented it as nearly as well as some of the other people uh, I really didn't take that many photos along the way what I did do though is I've put it up on Instagram I've, I'm trying to use Instagram more now I'm getting into reels I do use Instagram quite a lot and yeah, I've been getting into reels and just doing some fun stuff, different stuff there. So you want to see some extra, extra things. Um, yeah, if you can follow me on Instagram, I tend to post something there every couple of days or so whenever I feel like it. Uh, but yeah, that's it for now. I hope you all enjoyed this chat along with me and get ready video. Like I said before, if you wanted to answer any of the questions, I would love that. So please feel free to leave them in the comments. But I hope you're all having a fantastic day, afternoon or evening, or whatever it might be, wherever you are. And I'll see you all in my next video. Bye for now.